How many of you would like to start using machine learning in your products? Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Because today I would like to tell you what I learned while building a machine learning based product from scratch. But for starters, a few words about myself. My name is Matthias Casa. I'm a product manager and I'm working at Zalando. And before I joined Zalando, I was working in a startup and was like, and what I really love about product management is product discovery. So I really love talking to customers and covering their problems and then trying to solve their problems with the right product. And not so long ago, I got into machine learning. So I started with Zalando, working on item to item and first message implementations. And soon afterwards, I moved into a completely new team to build a completely new product, mainly OTT implementations. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Because today I would like to tell you how, what was my journey when building this product and what I believe are the main principles that you should keep in mind when trying to build a successful machine learning based product. So I think it's super important that we are all on the same page when it comes to what machine learning and artificial intelligence actually are. Because you have probably noticed that AI and machine learning as well are super hot topics these days and everyone is talking about artificial intelligence. And what you might have also noticed is that AI means different things to different people. So for some of you, maybe artificial intelligence is all about robots and artificial life forms that can surpass human intelligence. And probably for others, any kind of system that uses big, amount, big, big amounts of data can be called AI. And the reason for the popularity of the name AI and maybe also the mix-up of what it actually means is partially due to the fact that the term AI started to be used for different disciplines that in the past actually had different names. So what you can very often see is that people tend to call AI, use the name game AI, for example, for statistics, for data processing, data mining. Some people think that manually encoded if then statements are artificial intelligence. This is why I created this little cheat sheet for you. And I would like to very briefly talk about what are the differences between those most commonly uh, talked about fields, and also what is the relationship. So let's start with um, data science. So data science is a very broad kind of umbrella term for many different disciplines that make use of understanding the data. So actually under, under the umbrella of data science, we can find statistics, data mining, and also now let's move on to artificial intelligence. Here, the definition is not as straight. A lot of people still cannot agree what AI actually is. But what we can say for sure is that artificial intelligence is all about machines that are able to simulate intellectual behavior. And by intellectual, I mean any kind of tasks that can be successfully performed by a human. So for example, thinking or learning. Now let's move on to machine learning, so the topic of my presentation today. So machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence, and it's all about getting the data, creating patterns, making predictions based on those patterns, and then updating the patterns based on whether the prediction was correct or not. So in short, machine learning is about pattern recognition, and about algorithms that are able to solve tasks without being explicitly program to do so. And last but not least, learning. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning and the depth in the name basically um, refers to the complexity of mathematical models that are used uh, to solve the problem. So to make the understanding of the tricky relationships between those fields a bit easier, here is a very simple diagram. So you can see on the left hand side we have uh, computer science. So computer science is a huge, huge, huge field, and I hope artificial intelligence and machine learning belong to that field. But of course, computer science is much more than that. It's also human-computer interaction, software engineering, and many, many more. And on the right-hand right side, we have data science. So 
So usually, traditionally, data science is not considered to be a part of computer science, but of course, it needs and uses computer science and artificial intelligence from time to time. But some people consider, for example, statistics, um, business analytics, or some people even law, law to be a part of data science. So what I focus on, what my team is working on, is machine learning. We are using machine learning in, the, in our product. And now I'd like to tell you what I learned while building it. So actually, the first thing I learned has nothing to do with machine learning. So regardless of whether we are thinking of building a machine learning based product or not, the first super, super important thing you need to do is actually discover the problem we are trying to solve. So first you need to understand your customers, really know what pains they have, and only then think about how you are going to solve the problem. So how did it look for my team? In Zalando, we have a very powerful, popular product <coughs> called item to item recommendations. So what we know is that our customers very often do, they go to the product page, they find something they kind of like, but it's not a perfect product, and then they scroll down the page and see those similar articles there, and then they continue to their journey navigating through those recommendations until they find something that really works for them. So we know that this is a product that works for our customers, it also works very well for the business, and we are thinking, okay, what can we do next? What can be like our bold new product? What can be our recommendations 2.0? So we had a hunch that something is there that we can use and build upon it. But it was just a hatch. And hatch is definitely not enough to build a product, especially if you are thinking of using machine learning there. So what we did, we started talking to our customers to really understand what problems they are struggling with. What we've heard very quickly is that a lot of our customers, often when they come to Zalando, they find something they like, they want to buy it. They often are not sure if this item works in their wardrobe, so does it, does it fit what they have already bought? And us, as a shop, we are not really trying to help them to solve this problem. So, a couple of things that we heard during our interviews were, for example, it's frustrating to combine new and old into outfits that I'm full of, are in my style, and have a good price. What we also heard was that it would be great if Zalando could make me outfit suggestions based on my previous orders and the mission. So I think um, at least some of you were in the situation that you come to your favorite online shop, you find the product, you spend quite a lot of time finding the perfect product, two weeks later you come back, well, you have to do whole work all over again, whether you like it or not. Another challenge that we knew that already exists uh, was the challenge of overwhelming assortment. So this is kind of a specific challenge because currently in our assortment we have approximately 300,000 articles from more than 2,000 international brands. That's a lot. That's awesome. But it's also a challenge. So because for many customers the big choice means a paradox of choice. There's just too much to choose from, it takes too much time, and it becomes frustrating. So one of the very telling quotes, uh, something we had from our Swiss customers, was that there really is a lot of jobs. Even when I know exactly what I want, it takes me a long time to find what I need. A huge selection, I know it's good. So after analyzing all the interviews that we conducted, and also looking at the past research conducted at Zalando, we defined this very short and crisp problem statement. So this is the problem that we believe we could solve that really exists as a problem for our customers and we are we believe we can solve it with our new product. Namely, our customers struggle to combine clothes that they already own or like, put new items into meaningful products. And we also hope that, that with this new product will kind of reduce at least the problem of future sorting and so on. So again. I think it has nothing to do with machine learning, but I hope it's still interesting for you because before you start thinking about any solution, really spend a lot of time 
understanding the customer problem and discovering and then defining. Um, so after we did that, we moved on to designing different solutions, testing them, them again with customers, and finally we picked up our winning solution. And then we were supposed to build it. But we didn't build our uh, algorithm. Not at all. And this is the next thing I learned. Fake it till you make it. Or rather, fake it till you know what you should Fake it till you know that you should spend a lot of time and money on building a machine learning solution. So, our first idea was to put algorithmic outputs on the customer's wishes. So here you can see there's a wish list of one of our customers. She put some articles there. And for each and every article on the wish list, we are suggesting items that go well with that item. So this is what our customers saw on the wish list. But there was no algorithm. It was basically just an Excel sheet full of items, a full, full of outfits <laughs> created by uh, our Zalando stylists. So why did we do it? Why didn't we just build the algorithm finally after all this discovery and what not? Well, we knew, we validated our assumptions in a qualitative way by talking to customers, but building a, machine, a product that uses machine learning is a big investment. So we wanted to mitigate the risk of creating something that nobody would use as much as possible. And this is why we wanted to validate it also in a quantitative way. So what we did, we rolled out an A-B test. And in this A-B test, the test uh, group saw outfits on the wishes. And luckily for us, the results of the A-B test were positive. So we saw an increase in click-through rate. We also saw an increase in up to cart uh, rate. Only, only then we are confident that this is something we should build. And then we find a moment. So, <laughs> what did we do? So, our product is called Our Big Fashion Companion. And we are currently live in all markets on customers' wish list and home page. So, on the wish list, customers can explore outfits that fit the, the item they put on the wish list. As you said before, because the design is slightly different. And on the home page, they can explore outfits that fit what they most recently bought. And the beauty of this solution is the scalability. So we can provide outfit, show outfit to any customer for any article from uh, any article from our assortment. So what did I learn by doing this? Finally, what did you learn? I learned that when you are building products that use machine learning, you have to embrace uh, what I call machine learning mindset as a product manager. So there are some things that are exactly the same uh, as if when you are building a, very tra a traditional digital product. So you need to discover, you need to define a solution, and so on. But there are also some parts that are completely, completely different, very different, and that you need to understand to, to be successful. So first, First thing, first principle, is about planning for experiments, not outcomes. So machine learning is a he very heavily research-oriented uh, work. So what you do usually, you do a lot of experiments. The beauty of experiments is that you very rarely know what the outcome will be. So you cannot plan for the outcome. You cannot plan for successes. You cannot plan for failures. And this is sometimes tricky, challenging, and a bit stressful. But what you can do as a product manager, you can very carefully plan your experiments. So you can create milestones for every step of the experiment you want to, um, you want to do. And then, even more importantly, you need to define what success looks like upfront. So before you start the experiment, you really need to know what are the success criteria. Related to the topic of unpredictability, uncertainty, this is what I call don't wait for your next best algorithm uh, principle. So what I saw um, in my team is that very, quite often we're afraid of taking risks. So we'd rather spend a lot of time building our perfect algorithm that hopefully in the future will bring us amazing results and make all our customers very happy. So let me give you an example. 
our uh, the first version of our algorithm was the, the model was trained on a data which were outfits created by stylists for German customers. So we assume that the output of our model, the outfits that will be created, will have some kind of specific German style. And therefore we hypothesize that if they have specific German style, they will, they will only appeal to our German customers. Because people in France or in the UK have different style. So what we thought was that okay, we only can roll out in Germany or if it is successful, and then we need to get uh, market specific data, train our algorithm and only test test in the respective markets. Makes sense, right? Well, <laughs> Because of lack of resources and time, we decided to actually validate our assumptions in a quantitative way. So what we did, we wrote, wrote out the, the algorithm in all markets as an A-B test to really see if we, what we thought was right or not. Yeah. And the surprising thing was that the German outfits were performing better in some, mar were performing better in some markets than in Germany. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, if we waited, if we waited and tried to really create this, build this perfect algorithm, my, my hypothesis is that we will still no, not roll out in all markets as, as we did. So my recommendation is that be bold as, as bold as possible, re, um, test your assumptions as early as possible, um, and also plan. Land well and define what success looks like before you start exploring. And this is the last topic that I would like to talk about today. This is the topic of how the future looks like. So, how the future of machine learning looks like, and are we humans even a part of this future? So, for me, the answer is very, it's very simple and straightforward yes, definitely. We can only build successful products using machine learning when we put humans involved. And also, please remember that all the machine learning algorithms only know what they've seen before. And usually what they've seen before was created at some point. So let me again give you an example from my team, how we, how we work with humans. And we work in our team, we have all humans there, but we also work with other humans. <laughs> So um, we work a lot of fashion experts. So as you know, in fashion, every season there are new trends coming. So there are different colors, different paths, and then different ways of how you combine different items of clothing. And our fashion experts have all this expertise at, ha at hand. So what we do, we talk with them, we learn from them, and we can then inject all this knowledge directly into our algorithms. So of course, what we could do, we could let wait and try um, that our algorithms learn from customers' behavior to learn about the strengths, but probably then our outfit will not be as fashionable as we do. And the source of knowledge, feedback, everything is the more important one is of course our customers. So yes, we conduct a lot of A-B tests uh, where we try to evaluate the, the performance of our and quality of our algorithms. But what we also do, we talk to our customers to understand their existing problems and maybe trying to identify if there are some new problems that will be appearing soon. What we also do, uh, directly in our product, we place those little surveys when we ask questions about how customers like what they see. And thanks to that, we can quickly identify the improvement areas. So let me assure you, uh, machine learning products or products that use machine learning can only reach full potential when created together with humans. And on that note, I would like to thank you very much for listening and if you have any questions, I'm super happy to answer them and if you want to get in touch later on, here are my questions.